Cool. Let's jump to the story. We got a we got a story from the post millennial. Antifa member sentenced to sixty months probation for May twenty twenty one Portland riot. That's it? arson. Probation. Hold on, hold on. Can you go up? He was charged with arson. Yeah, he was. Uh, Jared Bailey Huber pleaded guilty to one count of arson in the second degree. One count of criminal mischief in the first degree and one count of riot. And he got 60 months probation. Somebody check on every He's not, single January 6th defendant right I, now. Yeah. Is it They're not, not locking him up. They're like, all right, we'll just call us and let us know. It's just a warning. They're, they're, you, you just set buildings on fire. He was just expressing you know himself. Many, he, exactly. He's, <laughs> he's a creative kid. It's free speech. It, it was self-defense. You know what's... <laughs> he had to set the building up. You guys know, like, that famous graphic that goes around of all, like, what Antifa looks like, right? And, like, yeah. the, and it's just, like, the ugliest of them all. <laughs> it's funny, because that night, that graphic, I'm the one person that was left out of that graphic. Because that night, I was arrested with them, because I was in Black Block recording on the ground. Spent a whole night in jail with them. But then I never have seen me on the graphic. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was like, but all the were. people that were on the graphic, I was sitting in jail with alongside all night talking to I was on the graphic because they edited me to look less handsome. I was going to say, are you guys just telling us you're handsome? I don't understand. (laughs) I mean, but hold on, hold Hold on. Here's the inverse. We have a story from the Daily Mail. New York City mother of three who slammed into BLM protesters after they terrorized her finally accepts plea deal. She will, she was sentenced to five hours of community service instead of six days, which she was offered, but she was facing seven years. So this is a video where they surround her vehicle. She's with her 29 year old daughter. They're screaming, and banging and then she hits the gas and just boom and these people go flying she already nope. did her community service nobody got any serious <laughs> serious injuries but she hasn't done it yet she has to do five hours and then if she does she will be able to uh, uh that's it she's out so the issue here is it's kind of good news the better news would have been that she was not convicted exactly. at all because she Dropped. was attacked yep. and she was panicking trying to hurt but, her kids but she said that she accidentally hit the gas in a panic and that she didn't mean to hurt anybody. And that's why they said, okay, fine, we'll give you uh, five hours community service. But this is good news because this woman was originally facing seven years. It was a big deal. We were like, this is crazy. They surround your vehicle. This was several months after in Provo, Utah, they shot a driver. Mm-hmm. That's the uh, John Sullivan, same guy that was there on January 6th in the room alongside me with Ashley Babbitt. That was his group, Insurgents USA. In, in, in Provo? Provo, Utah. Wow. Yep. He was actually arrested during that same day uh, during that protest. So it goes back far. But another thing that hasn't hit the news yet that actually I think will be good news regarding Antifa, kind of inverse to the Portland one, is last week in Texas, outside of one of these Fort Worth drag shows, um, you know, Antifa decided to go up to a Catholic group and mace them while they were praying on their rosaries. And it was all wow. caught on security camera. The cops went and arrested him while he was there. And then in response, the leader of the group, uh, Christopher Gullett, leader of John Brown Gun Club, um, you know, he went and he decided he would assault a police officer while uh, armed with a firearm. And then same with one of their medics decided wow. to assault a police officer. When was this? This was last week. And oh, wow. it, it didn't really get a lot of attention in the news. It got a little bit, you know, Andy No put it out because that's his thing. Um, and, you know, there, I think they are going to face felony charges. I don't see how you can assault a police officer in the state of Texas while you're armed. I and not Where say in Texas but, was it? It was in Fort Worth. We'll which, see. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, Fort Worth PD, though, it was crazy to see that response because, you know, I've seen them be violent in Dallas. I've seen them be violent all around Texas and to do things that would warrant arrest. But the cops never do anything regarding the drag shows and regarding Antifa. This was the first time that I've actually seen a police force actually do something and use some force. Do you feel like they're becoming more confident? I felt like for a while people didn't know how to react to Antifa because they are. They're becoming more. That's why they're becoming violent, I think, is it's getting close to election season. Things are heating up. I mean, I'm on lists. I can't even go into these shows anymore because they specifically stand armed outside these events because of my coverage now. So usually I have to send somebody or go in a really good disguise or find one that wow. they're distracted here. So I got to go do this other one in a different part of town. Wow. Um, but they're becoming more violent. And that's how it always is, is as you get closer to the summer. That's when violence really occurs yeah. is during the summer. Well, it is, it's, it's, coming. it's just insane, mm-hmm. right? So this person, this dude burns down a building, doesn't see any prison time. Thankfully, this woman didn't get in trouble for defending herself and her children. I know she said she accidentally hit the gas, but when people surround your car after someone was already shot who was in their car, after, I mean, look, uh, granted, it was a few decades ago, but what was it, Rodney King? During the Rodney King riots, that trucker was bold, pulled out of his truck and, and beaten. beaten, and beaten yep. Just severely beaten. These kinds of things happen. When a mob surrounds your car, that's extremely dangerous. And why should you be forced to risk your children's life by sitting there while these people are terrorizing it's you? absurd. There was yeah. a video out of Chicago of that where they surrounded a guy's car and dragged him out and started mm-hmm. beating him. Mm-hmm. And that you're, and that's that's the thing. You're supposed to let that happen because when somebody gets beaten or killed by the mob, it's not a news story. But when they defend themselves, 
It's a national trial. Hey, they're good kids, man. They're just misunderstood. Okay, mm-hmm. just you know, a mostly peaceful beating. That's what I experienced. Remember that in story Poland. about the uh, the subway vigilante in New York? I think that was before my time. Yeah, but it was like crime was really bad in the '80s, and then some. He dude, had a gun. Yeah, and he shot mm-hmm. some like dudes who said were robbing him, and then they claimed they weren't robbing him, but everybody cheered for him. And the anyway. guy was paralyzed, right? I don't know. I, don't, I, I that was well before my time. I, don't I mean, that's that's the thing, though, is I think as like, you know, in places like New York and in these high crime areas is you're going to start, especially during 2024 and election season as things heat up, you're going to see some vigilantism. Like, yeah, you're going to see people carrying out what the police are supposed to be. They're going to be the ones, you know, handing the pain down to Antifa and to these other radical groups that are trying to quite literally kill these people. And it's just going to get worse and worse because when the cops aren't going to do their job and the DAs are not going to prosecute who else has to do it? Yeah. I mean, you're going to get more Kyle well, Rittenhouse situations as well. And looking yep. at this, contrast 60 months probation, for, I mean, being serious against the felonies that people who entered the Capitol have been charged mm-hmm. with, right? Like, yep. There is an obvious bias, so you can't even trust that if someone is arrested for, you know, violently burning down your business, that they are actually going to serve an adequate punishment. Uh, I think that would be it only encourage our low trust society to start to tear apart. Yep. Oh, well, also, I think I'm that's sorry. The point. I don't know why it it's the case that arson just isn't a big deal to people anymore. Burning down a building to go to jail for less than a decade for something like that is absurd. You know how many people you can kill? Mm hmm. Just the completely reckless abandon, the lack of consideration for human life. You're a danger to society if you do something like that. It's not even just a question of whether you need to be punished. It's whether you should be allowed outside. Yeah. And the answer is no, you shouldn't be. That person should be locked up for decades. Well, well I you bet you burnt could... a building down. Right, in a city where it could have spread to any number exactly. of people. Exactly. I mean, it's out of control. I also think if we looked up any other arson, you would find that they get much more time. It's because of the affiliation with the, the summer of peace or whatever mm-hmm. we call it uh and antifa that this person is getting special treatment like they are rewarding someone who intentionally tried to basically hurt other mm-hmm. people well, I mean, exactly the- well there, there's there's uh, a point to be made here about what's called moral luck so if this person had set this building on fire and there had been 10 people inside who died they wouldn't be a different kind of person yep. than this individual was. Their moral character would be identical. They just happen to get lucky in the sense, or maybe unlucky from their perspective, that no one was in there mm-hmm. for them to be able to kill with their arson. Mm-hmm. But what they did is absolutely not different at all. They just happen to have the fortunate legal outcome for themselves that nobody died. I mean, I remember in 2020, uh, one of the first times I was on the ground in Portland, it was night 100. Um an Antifa member decided they wanted to throw a Molotov cocktail. It was insane within the first five minutes of them marching. And they threw it at the police. They missed, hit their own guy and lit him on fire. And that's oh where like gosh. the pants on fire clip came from. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. And, you know, went way viral. Trump retweeted it. And then all of a sudden, no charges. He hit his own guy, but he was trying to kill police officers. The police officers literally had to walk over and put him out. But... Nobody else was doing it. They were trying to hit him with a duct tape shield. It's like, yeah, that's great. That's going to put him out. But there's no repercussions of that. Like, he tried to kill multiple police officers, and I never saw any charges from that. They never knew who he was. Exactly. So what's happened right now is the state is not merely failing to uphold civility. It is act actively anti-civil. Mm-hmm. When somebody tries to protect themselves or their property or someone else, they end up getting locked up. Mm-hmm. But when somebody goes out and they destroy things, they either don't get locked up or they get a slap on the wrist because that's what you're supposed to do. And you're I, supposed to go out and destroy things. That's the current paradigm. Right. And I, I can't imagine, you know, the stories out of Portland, right? Like Portland is a liberal city. At some point, don't the residents there start saying like, this is not working for us. We- well, I mean, businesses have already basically completely moved out of mm-hmm. Portland. I know some business owners there that they have lost literally their livelihoods because of these riots in 2020, and they don't know what to do. Nobody wants to open new businesses there. You still go to Portland. There's hardly anywhere to eat anymore. Everything is still shut down basically mm-hmm. completely. Like that is my least favorite place to go. One, because the energy in the air, you can feel that there's something inherently mm. wrong and demonic going on there but two you can't get any food and if you do it's like 90 bucks for something super small and it's only takeout non-contact list i thought insurance would pay for it crazy that's what we're told right because oh, it's did, you guys know that, do you know that insurance because insurance exists you can destroy anything you want for any reason and no one's harmed and in, Dude, actu- in actuality business- the insurance have caps 
Exactly. So, People will go into debt just cleaning up the wreckage of their business what, before they even start rebuilding it. What happened in Minnesota was that they nobody could get paid out, so the buildings just were destroyed. I mean, you've forever. seen the before and after pictures. Yeah. It's apocalyptic. And this is the thing. It's not just that the buildings are destroyed and gone forever. The business owner has to pay to clean the rubble up. Right. So not only is their business destroyed, now whatever savings they had, if they had any, are going to be wiped out trying to clean the property, trying to get all the rubble off of it because you're not allowed to just leave a half-burnt building standing. There is there is, there is evil infest, infested in, in our government. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, the cops shake you down at the border. Yep. Like those are evil people. It's anti-civility. Yeah. They actively work against civil society. They're not just they're failing to, to do their it. duty. They're working in the opposite direction. They want to destroy it. Well, it's the same thing with the the cops that don't want to enforce, you know, these uh, these drag shows. They don't want to go in and arrest anybody because, oh, it's going to look bad on social media or we might get fired from our jobs. It's like that is literally your job. There are laws being broken. There when there are sexual you know what's going to look bad on Judgment on Day? Day? When, yeah. when there's children there. Yeah. Because what the left keeps trying to say is that the right is banning drag shows. And then they come out like Kevin Bacon saying, hey, drag's fine. It's like nobody cares about drag. They care about them having burlesque shows for children. Mm -hmm. That's not appropriate. Exactly. I mean, it's crazy that we even have to say that. Like, I just came out with that piece that you guys published. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Um, and Chris, if you're watching, Chris Bertman, you're awesome. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.